Hey, welcome back. This is part two of our pepper uh, series yes. and behind the label. And we left off last time. We finished up with Elijah. Elijah pepper. passed away. Yeah. Uh, Elijah passed away. Elijah Pepper. And now we're going to start with uh, his son, Oscar, Oscar Pepper. Yeah. So Oscar took over. Uh, he was only 22. That's a uh, pretty young. That's pretty young. Probably young. pretty old back in those days. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty young for these days. But he takes over, and uh, actually he does some very important things in the 1830s. Now, just as an aside, I remember reading somewhere, because um, I know last time with our Colonel Taylor series, if you've been watch if you watched that, mm -hmm. Colonel Taylor actually was kind of part of Oscar Pepper's uh, story. Yeah, yeah, he and, comes in around around James's time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at that time, Oscar was only what 15 when when Colonel Taylor kind of showed up. Didn't he kind of James? Think? James was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. James okay. is 15. Yeah, yeah. So James Oscar, is 15. Yeah, okay. Oscar, he takes over in 1830s, and his, okay. he does a couple of big things. He actually builds builds a distillery there. Uh, At Glens Creek, if you, if you watch yeah. our last one. We're, right now, as far as where we're geographically sitting, yeah. today we're on Leestown Pike in Lexington, um, but what we're talking about is on Glens Creek Glens in Creek. Woodford County. Yes, in Woodford County. He uh, Actually, where his dad, Elijah, had been you know distilling, he actually builds a distillery uh, there. Um, and actually, there's part of it still there today. So if you take the, the tour of Woodford Reserve and you go into the building uh, that has the three real cool pot stills in it, that's what he built, that part of that. Yeah, and those are, ori those are original, those are his stills. I don't know about the stills, but the building itself oh, okay. is, is, is what he built. So, um, so that's still there. But another big thing he did in the 1830s is he hired a particular person to make his bourbon. And I know I, that's where you I, live. I've, I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. So he hired uh, James Crow. James C. Crow. James C. Crow. What's yeah. his middle name? Christopher, I think. Was his uh, name. I, 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 <laughs> I think was his yeah. middle name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. James C. Crow. He's kind of a little fascination of mine just because it kind of ties in. He's from Scotland. He's originally from Inverness, Scotland. Uh, educated in Edinburgh. Uh, was a, actually a physician over mm -hmm. there. Uh, doesn't sound like he did much practice over there very long, but because he moved over here pretty pretty quickly right yeah. after he graduated medical school. I think he ended up first in, uh, I want to say Pittsburgh or How about uh, that area. I, th yeah. I think in that area, up yeah. in up in the Northeast, uh, and then soon thereafter came down here. Uh, and the reason he's important in this story is because he introduced a uh, more scientific, methodical approach to whiskey making at that time. It, before mm -hmm. that, it was definitely much more the um, you know witches brew art craft of this tastes good, so you know I kind of mm -hmm. have an idea in my head how to make this. Um, he took more like meticulous notes. He yes. used. Yeah. Um, you know, scientific instruments to measure things like sugar and pH level. Thermometer, sacrometer. Yeah. yeah. So he used. All, so he basically kept measurements, and he converted into uh, somewhat at that time was still kind of a backwoods art form, uh, craft form into a combination of science and art. Oh, he did. He, I mean, he made sure he used the, the charred barrels. Uh, he used uh, sour mash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, uh, uh, he, which he didn't invent, but right. Uh, he but he put, sort of perfect. He kind of figured out why that works, and yeah. he sort of perfected it, yeah. and really brought it to the brought consistency too. Yeah, consistency yeah, is too, probably and, the biggest and, thing. And then you know, old, old Oscar Pepper at the time was one of the best bourbons in the, you know in the country. Yep. And he was producing it just because he he had these standards of cleanliness, all this stuff. I mean. Uh, so he he kind of perfected that. So that was like a, a pretty good hire. That was his. I know he had worked at a distillery before that, and then came mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And uh, now the distiller. I'm forgetting the distiller he worked actually before. It wasn't. He didn't work there long. But um, I think it was Willis uh, Greer. It was just down the road. Yeah, I was from, gonna say it was. It was yeah. physically. It was yeah. literally just a mile or two down the road. It so, was. Yeah. So he actually probably. I would have to imagine uh, Oscar Pepper knew Jim or uh, Jim Crow in person before he hired him. Yeah. I mean, it's just since he literally worked down the road from yeah. him. So. so we hired him and that, that brought the, his bourbon to like, you know, national recognition. I mean, it was, you know, Henry Clay used it to uh, send it to Washington. Yeah, and we were actually, before we started filming this, we were kind of reviewing that, that store with uh, one of the owners here. And um, it's actually, when we get to this bottle here, uh, there's a f kind of a little famous story about Henry Clay apparently uh, procured a, uh, at least one barrel every year had that shipped all the way to Washington uh, to, I think he, I think the quote is he to lubricate uh, the machinery of government. Yeah, I think is how was, I think yeah. that's how he quotes it. Yeah. So he. So no, basically, he got the congressman tipsy on on, on, on good bourbon. on good bourbon on good bourbon. Yeah, yeah it was good, good bourbon. bourbon. Yeah. So I mean, so they're producing this, and all you know, eventually James Crow he dies in 1856. Uh, his assistant kind of takes over, um, using the same methods and everything that uh, James Crow was using. 
Uh, James Crow had actually left before he died to went to another distillery. So, uh, but he, he took over, and Oscar. I mean, he ran this distillery until he passed away. And you're talking about 1865. How, how old would he been then when when Oscar, who is the second generation, how old was he when he passed away? He was only 56. Okay, so he was pretty. He was pretty young. Pretty yeah, young. Yeah, the 56. Well, 56 50, now is young. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least to me. 56 is a number. 56 that, back you know, then probably very wasn't. prominent in the Pepper family. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll you'll see that later. But yeah, he he actually passed away. Uh, in 1865. Okay. So then, who, who took the reins after Oscar? Well, it's kind of a, com a complicated story there. Uh, his son James was only 15. He wasn't old enough to run the right. distillery. And there's a couple of different uh, rumors about, you know, how he got control of it. Uh, one was that, you know, he was, you know, it was in the estate, and he got. You know, he was. I saw that where he basically inherited it. Inherited it, yes, and, yeah. but he was not old enough to run. Yeah. I so, saw another one where he had to actually sue his mom. Uh, there was another control. rumor that he actually it was deeded to one of his younger siblings, mm -hmm. and he actually sued his mom to yeah. to get control of the distillery. But he was not old enough to run it. Uh, a Colonel H. You know, Taylor. So yep. if you watch our previous episode, you know who he is. Actually, uh, ran the distillery through through Gainsbury and Company. Right. As, as we talked about before, he was the company in that. So it was kind of leased to them to run it, and it was pretty much Colonel Taylor was running yeah. the distillery. And I remember also reading something where they actually listed uh, young James at that time again was 15 mm -hmm. as something like uh, distillery proprietor, and there was some other term that they used. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, I mean, they didn't list him as distiller or anything. They, no, he basically no. was kind of like, oh, he's our mascot at, at the, for this point. Yes, <laughs> at the time. Yeah. So you want to try? Yeah. Let's. Uh, what are we going to start with here? We're going to represent. We are that. doing Woodford Reserve. So, so we're going to do Woodford Reserve again, which originally was the old Oscar, Oscar Pepper, Pepper distillery. Yeah. Um, and then became, I guess, at that point, the James Pepper distillery. No, no, it, it stayed old Oscar Pepper. They kept the name. They okay. kept the name. They sure did. It stayed that way for a while. Uh, so this is their basic distiller select. Did they continue to call it Oscar Pepper? Because I know they switched to like Old Pepper. Mm -hmm. No, it was pretty much Old Oscar Pepper uh, until it was sold later on. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much even when James was in control, it was still the it was Old still Oscar. Still the Old Oscar. It, Pepper. The, the name was, you know, like I said, the names are everything. So, so that, that name, as you said, it was kind of known to be a good whiskey. So mm -hmm. they didn't want to lose. They didn't want to lose the notoriety of the name. All right. So yeah, I've, I've had Woodford Reserve before. Yeah, most this is just a regular distiller select yeah. that most people. Most people, you know, they know, uh, so it's just, you know, hair over 90 proof. So this is what they sell. This is their, their big thing. Yeah, this is the one that, you know, if you go to Brazil, if you go anywhere in the world and you see Woodford Reserve, this is most likely the one you're going to see. Um, I always did like the bottle, like the design of the bottle. Um, shaped so, like a flask. It is shaped like a flask. I never it noticed is. that. Yeah, I mean, shaped like a flask. flask. So uh, they're, I mean, it's a 90 proof. Uh, it's a combination, it's 72% corn. So it's actually a little lower corn than what we've had before, with 18% rye and 10% uh, barley. So. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what, I know I've told you this before, um, that was the very first time I tried it, I assumed it was very high uh, proof mm -hmm. because it's got a little more of a bite until I realized it's basically a little higher uh, percentage-wise, mm -hmm. rye. Uh, yeah. That's kind of what's giving it that yeah. bite. So. so they don't tell the age on it, but most people think it's about six plus. So. I mean that's about six plus years. So this is what, like I said, they're their number one seller. This is what everybody's used to. So yeah, it's it's hard to go wrong with. It's good. Um, this always, for some reason, reminded me of a winter bourbon. I mean, maybe it's because it's got a little more heat, mm -hmm. uh, kind of that pepper. It's a little higher it. rye than yeah, some it's other a little ones. higher rye. So yeah. get, it leaves you with that kind of warm uh, on the back of your tongue kind of feeling, warm in the in the chest kind of thing. So for some reason, it always reminded me of uh, of more of a winter winter bourbon. I guess. Mm -hmm. So. We'll pick back up. So we're Oscar passes away. So Oscar passes away. James is now 15. Mm -hmm. Colonel Taylor is helping to run the place. Yep, through it's, Gaines Bearing Company. Yeah, it's yep. still, but it's still called Old Oscar Pepper. Old Oscar Pepper. All right, so uh, then what happens? So James gets the order, and then by 1874, he actually partners with Colonel Taylor to run the distillery. Now when you say partners, you mean he puts a financial stake into yes, it? Yes, he does. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he actually. He actually borrows money to improve the distillery, okay. uh, which is his downfall. So, I mean, you're talking about people back then, we talked about Colonel Taylor, kind of a wheeler dealer, TV Rippy, same way, wheeler dealer. Yeah. So they made money, they lost money. But that's what I really enjoyed about uh, reading some of the stuff about mm -hmm. James is 
Um, he seemed to differ a little bit, again, from Elijah and Oscar, his, his forefathers. Uh, they seem to be more just on the whiskey. He was definitely more of the on the P.T. Barnum side of I've got I make good whiskey and I want everybody to know about. Oh, it. he does. He, he promoted it. <laughs> he he just, promoted he the heck a, out of it. He was definitely a, yeah. a promotion so, guy. Uh, so he uh, gets old enough that he partners with Colonel Taylor. Uh, he gets himself in a little financial financial trouble and uh, has to sell the distillery. So in 1877, he sells his family distillery. Now he sells it to his share to Colonel Taylor. He sells it to Colonel Taylor, who is, who is basically part of the co. At that time, was company? He, was, yeah, was, was uh, he in Gain, the uh, uh, Gainsbury and okay. Company? So in yeah. essence, uh, James sold it to Gainsbury and Company. Yeah. Okay. So he sells it. Uh, Colonel Taylor is running it, and actually, Colonel Taylor, within a year, does the exact same thing. He overextends himself financially, yep. and he has to sell it. And this is the same time that he's running OFC in in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. He has to sell both distilleries that year. So he has, and the OFC, again, if you're just kind of doing that old fire copper, one of the, one of the kind of the big names back then. Mm -hmm. um, so he sells it, so uh, James sells it to Taylor. Taylor then sells it to LeBro and Graham. Actually, he sells it to Stag first. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, he, he sells, Stag was in the middle of He that. sells okay. both distilleries to Stag, and Stag actually keeps OFC. Okay. And then turns around and sells the same year, sells uh, old Oscar Pepper. So, so to uh, Leopold the Bro and James Graham. Okay. So then Stag then is left with OFC Old Fire Copper. Mm -hmm. um, he gets he unloads what was the old uh, Oscar Pepper Distillery. Yes. And then to, basically to Le LeBron and Graham. LeBron and Graham. Who then keep it? They keep it quite a while. Right? They do keep it quite a while, and it actually that's when it actually changes changes name from Old Oscar Pepper Distillery. Okay. So if you go today and you go to the Steel Room, that beautiful block building. Uh, that the seals are in it. There's a big millstone above the door. Still says Old Oscar Pepper on it. So I'll have to check that out. Yeah. yeah so it's still there. Uh, so he he you know Oscar Pepper James they left their mark there. And uh, I guess we'll find out what became of that distillery. Yeah. In our I'm next intrigued. <laughs> so stick tuned. See you then. Open my eyes, so I took a CF man, what a trip. I think I started making.